Our movie starts with Catherine and her lover in a sports car. She wanted to sleep with him in the car to try out high-speed sex, but he seems very drunk so she chose to do it by herself. She lost control of the car and the car fell in the river. She tried to take off his seat belt, but she couldn't. She got flooded, so she opened the window and she got out. Her boyfriend seems surprised and completely confused about what happened as he was so drunk. Basic Instinct Part 2 At the investigation department, the investigator asked her whether she had helped him survive, and she said yes. But when she found herself in the water, she abandoned him, calling this a selfish behavior. These are drugs that were found in her and her boyfriend's blood samples. But the two drugs are different. Each one used a different drug, which led to a different outcomes. The investigator said she didn't look sad about what had happened, so she said she was sad. But she had no idea if she'd still have fun. She appears daring and confident and feels no guilt about what happened. The investigator was extremely upset and considered her a psychopath. And she should be introduced to a psychologist to evaluate her mental status. The psychologist conducted a session with her where he was able to evaluate her mental status. He informed the judge that she is clever, talented, and has no mental disorder. But she has a love of risk, as she tries to prove that she can survive risk that others cannot, especially the risk of going to prison and escaping punishment. So, she is more dangerous for herself than for others. Catherine was released, there was insufficient evidence to arrest her, but investigator Rushper told Dr. Glass she'd do it again. She went to Dr. Glass and said she wanted him to treat her, so she wouldn't do anything more serious. Because a week before the accident, she had fantasy that she was taking drugs with her boyfriend and they had an accident. He died while she survived. Glass told her they would send her to a colleague to treat her. But she said that she wanted him to treat her as it would be fun for her. But he refused. So, she wrote a check and gave it to him to accept. He said it would be better if they met again to discuss it. When the date of the psychological session arrived, he asked her what kind of violence she was thinking. She told him that she was a writer and that she had to invent new ways to kill her victims whenever she wrote stories. She told him about the Chislov case, the one that killed his girlfriend, who was a dangerous person, but you protected him and that put you in danger, and said, What if I killed my boyfriend? Will you report it to police? He said no. This woman looked suspicious in her fake smile and in her questions, where she acted as a doctor instead of patient. During the next psychological session, she talked only about sex, death, drugs, violence, as in her novels. And she talked about Cap Washper who was looking for evidence to convict her of Frank's murder. She talked to him also about the investigator Nick we saw in the previous part, and said she wanted to sleep with him and that he died at the same time they did it. At night, his ex-wife Denise called him and asked him to come quick. When he got to the place, he found the body of her beloved Adam and it seems he was strangled to death, which is terrible. The next day, Catherine came to her usual psychological session and told him that the investigator suspected that she was the one who killed Adam, because she was addicted to risk and denied doing so. She went away and lit a cigarette, but Dr. Glass got angry and asked her not to smoke. She sat down and started talking to him with six words, trying to seduce him, gave him a sense of it. Then she got out. When he met the investigator, he told him that Catherine's prints were everywhere in the house, which is normal. She's Adam's friend. But the point is, Adam called her one hour before he died. And in the meantime, no one's seen her. So, he suspected she's the perpetrator. Gus refused too, and the investigator reminded him of the Cheslov case, the murder of his beloved and his survival. As a pressure card to say anything he knew, Apparently, Catherine was able to manipulate Dr. Glass's mind and he got confused and thinking about her all the time. He also kept an eye on her and followed her everywhere she went. He found her when he got to this place, which is a small prostitution district. He looked for her and found her inside having a good time with a man. When he came back, he looked confused. He seemed to be very jealous. When he met his colleague, the investigator, he told him that all the information about the Cheslov case was in the Adams computer, and it looks like Catherine saw them, and told him that his ex-wife Denise said that Glass was lying about what he said about Cheslov. 
Catherine seems to choose specific people who have criminal histories and were acquitted, such as investigator Nick in the previous part. When he went to see his ex-wife, she told him that she actually said that, so he fought with her. She went with Catherine and he followed her and found her butchered in the toilet. Now he's in trouble. Witnesses said they got into an argument and then she was found with him butchered. Now he's a suspect in the crime. Catherine came and talked to the cop. It seems that she testified to exonerate him. So there is not enough evidence to arrest him. He met Catherine, they talked. And she told him that his ex-wife Denise and the Chislov case are included in her novel. Then they made love. Oh my god, she looks like a psycho. The next morning, when he opened the refrigerator, he found this drug. He gave it to the investigator and said it was the same drug that was found in the blood of Catherine's lover, Michael. As he left, he met this man who told him that investigator Ashper had taken his rap sheet. When he met this investigator, he told him that Adam wanted to pressure Catherine into a submission by publishing an article in a magazine, after which he was found dead. When he met Catherine, she asked him why he took insulin in the refrigerator. It seems that his conclusion was wrong, or she wanted to test him to see how honest he was. No one knows. When he met with the investigator, he told him that the analysis was for a drug and gave him the results of the tests. But the disclosure was on an unofficial site, so Glass didn't believe him, is Rashper lying or Catherine. He went to the brothel he previously went until he found out the Richard. The person who was slept with Catherine was killed the same way Adam was. What's the secret behind this belt? And the drug here is the same it was at Catherine's. The investigator told him that it was Catherine who did it. But Glass refused. It seems that he fell in love with her and couldn't accept it. Until now there is no conclusive evidence to prove that she was the one who committed all the crimes. When he came home, she gave him a disc containing the novel she had just finished. And when they came up, she admitted to him that she was the one who committed all the crimes. He got mad and drowned her in the water trying to kill her. But he just couldn't. Sounds like she drove him nuts. He went back and began to break things and then decided to read the novel. It was about him and the people that Catherine met. But she just changed the characters' names. After a long reading, he found that she said that she was going to kill Melina. He hurried and go to her, tried to call her but she didn't hear him. When he arrived home, he found her and she told him that Catherine told her that he had sex with her and tried to drown her in the water. And this is contrary to the professional code of conduct and he must undergo a probation of 28 days to avoid legal penalties and they must reconsider his license. Catherine's here and she's her patient now. He told her to tell the truth, she didn't answer. Then he decided to go, she tried to stop him but he pushed her hard and she was hidden on the head. When he got to Catherine, he found her with a gun. But she gave it to him and told him that Tislov had not killed his girlfriend, but Kapwashpur did. And he killed Adam too. Dr. Glass is getting crazy. Washburn arrives and she tells him to give her the gun because Washburn is going to kill her and accuse him of being the killer. When he broke down the door and shut him, Washburn told him she was lying to you all the time. Kill her. That's your only shot. But the police got him. Here we see Dr. Glass in a psychiatric hospital and seems to have lost his mind. Catherine began to tell him the truth on how he killed Adam because he had taken his wife from him and then went to his wife and butchered her. And that man in the brothel killed him because he slept with her, all out of jealousy. And in the end he killed Cap Washburn as he has evidence that could prove his guilt for these crimes. Catherine managed to manipulate his mind and make him kill those she wanted to kill and she enjoyed it. She survived by doing it and he paid the price. And he only had to read the novel. See you in the next video.